Okay, so this week we're going to be talking about Leonardo da Vinci, uh, who lived from 1452 uh, to 1517. Um, and so Leonardo da Vinci uh, is, or I shouldn't have said was, uh, is considered one of the most talented people of all time. He was both a gifted artist and a scientist, which included a variety of different topics, um, like research on anatomy, astronomy, and engineering. Uh, but of course, it didn't stop there. He had uh, entire lists of which he contributed um, immensely. Uh, and he was known for his inventions, many of which inspired modern technology, uh, such as like airplanes. Um, he was one of the biggest contributors to uh, modern life, really. Um, so he was born on April 15th, 1452 in the Tuscan town Vinci. Uh, and he was born out of wedlock, meaning not uh, out of marriage. Uh, so basically his father had a child with his um, mother, but they were not married. And that made him basically an illegitimate child. And that would affect his life later on. Um, and so his father was Messer Piero Frusino di Antonio da Vinci. Um, although his, his father here has the name da Vinci, um, Leonardo da Vinci does not, his last name does not refer to his father. Uh, da Vinci merely mean, means of Vinci, referring to the town that he was born in. So uh, as an Ill illegitimate child, he did not have his father or his mother's last name. So Leonardo lived with his mother uh, until he was five, but then his father decided to take responsibility and took Leonardo to raise him on his own land. Uh, and Leonardo's father was quite wealthy, um, and so he was able to live quite comfortably on his father's estate. Uh, from his father's subsequent wives, of which he had multiple, Leonardo would get up to 12 half-siblings. It's unknown on whether he was really close to any of them, but he did have many. Uh, he didn't really receive a formal education of some sort, but he always showed like an interest in nature and art, and he was always like a very, um, very talented, inquisitive uh, person. So uh, teenage life, uh, Leonardo knew that he would not be able to inherit anything from his father because he was an illegitimate child. Uh, and thus he decided to become an artist. Uh, and at 14 years of age, he was introduced to the notable artist at that time, Andrea del Verrocchio, uh, and became a helper. Uh, after seeing uh, Leonardo's talent, um, he became an official apprentice. Um, and here's a picture of Andrea del Verrocchio. Um, at that time. Um, so here is just an image of the study of a Tuscan landscape, one of his earliest sketches. Um, it's uh, fairly detailed um, and it shows the landscape of that area. So as a young adult, Leonardo encountered many different mediums. Um, and so he would learn uh, how to paint, sculpt, uh, like learn some engineering, how architecture works. Uh, and this would be um, one of his uh, earlier educations on, and like he, you can see that in the future, he becomes extremely talented in many of these um, styles. Uh, and he continued to stand out amongst other apprentices due to his sharp, inquisitive mind and his artistic talent. Uh, and at 20 years old, he helped Verrocchio paint the baptism of Christ for the Catholic Church. Um, and he was only 20 at the time, so the talent that was shown inside this painting uh, really um, showed his skill. And so this is a picture of the painting Baptism of Christ by Andrea del Verrocchio. Uh, and Leonardo worked as an apprentice for this artwork and he painted the two angels on the side, uh, which is right next to Jesus. Uh, and he, it was considered to be like the best part of the mural. They were supposed to be superior to the um, drawings and paintings that Andrea himself did. Uh, and there was a popular myth that after Verrocchio saw Leonardo's paintings, he never painted again due to how much better Leonardo was uh, than him. Um, obviously, though, that wasn't quite true. So um, the next section is Leonardo da Vinci's young adulthood. And so Leonardo became a full-fledged artist in his 20s and began 
and continued working in Virgil's workshop. He became uh, quite famous in this time due to his beautiful artwork. And uh, due to the conflicts between the two leading families there, tensions were rising between Florence and Naples. So Leonardo was hired to protect um, the Venice and worked on his engineering skills. Um, ultimately, due to a peace treaty, everyone was safe and there was no need for Leonardo's plans. Still, Leonardo was able to display his vast talent in engineering and show his unique genius in thinking of new inventions. In 1481, Leonardo had a commission for a religious mural called the Adoration of Mount. The Adoration of Mount. So beautifully planned and conceptualized, but remains unfinished. It was Leonardo, uh, Leonardo was not pleased with this results and abandoned it. And um, this was, uh, pretty common for a lot of Leonardo's works. And due to a habit uh, of leaving paintings unfinished, uh, led to a lot of legal troubles as well as controversial reputation. Da Vinci uh, decided to move to Milan. Uh, da Vinci was already an extremely talented artist, but he, came, but he became very interested in exploring engineering and the creation of weapons. He came to Milan hoping he would be able to make a career change. However, the Duke of Milan, who invited him, wanted Leonardo to paint a portrait of his mistress. Instead, Leonardo's artistic talent overshadowed his other aspirations. Um, the lady with her uh, name, the lady, or the painting portrayed Cecilia Gallerani, mistress of Duke of Milan, another one of da Vinci's masterpieces. The detail in the painting was a testament to Leonardo's skill, as was the unconventional way she was placed as to show three quarters of her face. Uh, Leonardo continued working for the Duke of Milan. He was commissioned to do many things, including creating a huge metal horse and even engineering weapons. He also painted one of his most famous paintings in this time called The Last Supper. He would continue working for the Duke for 17 years, during which he made several uh, anatomical discoveries preserved in his notebooks. The Last Supper. Uh, he took three years to complete the mural, and it's one of the most copy religious paintings in the world. Uh, the painting depicts a scene in which Jesus announces one of his apostles' uh, eventual betrayal. Um, another one of his religious paintings done in this time, uh, The Virgin of the Rocks, was also considered uh, a masterpiece of his. Adulthood. Um, unfortunately for Leonardo, the Duke of Milan had his reign overturned and he had to leave his place of high status. Uh, Leonardo was forced to return to Florence where Michelangelo, who was another very famous artist at the time, and many other young upcoming artists were dominating the industry. Um, so if you guys remember, we learned about Michelangelo last week, and um, you guys can go back to that um, video session if you guys don't remember much about him. In old age, Leonardo decided to continue expanding on his engineering ambitions. It was hired by Cesar Borgias, he wanted to make weapons that could be used by the military, and Borges was interested in his revolutionary ideas. However, Leonardo found that he could not stomach the violence and decided to stop pursuing his engineering ambitions. Leonardo decided to go back to painting, and it was during this time that he started and finished the painting of the Mona Lisa, which, was, which is known as one of his most famous works. Um, he carried it around with him for the rest of his life, and finally, the King of France invited him to live within his court in the small residence of Clou. Uh, Leonardo accepted and lived in wealth for his retirement. And there he would live to the age of 67 and then would die due to the after effects, after effects of a stroke. Um, this is the Mona Lisa, which if you remembered was a painting that he carried out around for the rest of his life and he painted in his very old age. And this is one of his most well-known paintings, probably um, like the most famous painting in the world currently. And the woman in this painting um, is known as Lisa 
Gherardini. However, her identity is not clear, and this is just a general theory. There are many theories of if she's even real or not. Um, and this painting currently resides in the Louvre Museum in Paris, France. This painting has had an extremely great influence on the Renaissance. For example, the famous painter Raphael used the Mona Lisa format for many of his paintings. So Leonardo da Vinci is not only known as a talented artist, but also known as an Italian polymath who displayed his skills in numerous areas of study. Well, most of for his paintings, such as Mona Lisa and the Last Supper, Leonardo is also renowned in the fields of civil engineering, chemistry, botany, geometry, physics, and so on. So here are some of his notable achievements in other areas. First, the treatment of light. When Leonardo started to paint, he broke the common way of using light. In the painting generally titled The Lady with the Ermine, he sets the figure diagonally to the picture's face and turns her head so that her face is almost parallel to the near shoulder. The back of her head and further shoulder are deeply shadowed. Around the obvious solid of her head and across the breast and hand, the light is diffused in such a way that the distance and the position of the light in, re in relation to the figure can be calculated. And Leonardo's treatment of light in the painting, such as the Virgin of the Rocks and the Mona Lisa, was changed forever the way in which artists perceive light and use in their paintings. And second, the section. As Leonardo became successful as an artist, he was given permission to dissect human corpse at the hospital of Santa Marina Nova in Florence. In 30 years, Leonardo dissected 30 male and female corpses of different ages. Together with Mark, Mark Antonio, he prepared to publish a theoretical work on autonomy and made more than 200 drawings. And what's next? Botany. The science of botany was long established by Leonardo's time. Leonardo's study of painting of plants resulting in many beautiful drawings in his notebooks was not, on, was not to record in parts of the plant, but rather as an artist and observer to record the precise appearance of the plant, the manner of growth and the way that the individual plants and flowers of single variety differ from each other. And astronomy. Leonardo lived at a time when geocentric theories was the most widely used explanation to account for the relationship between the Earth and the Sun's movement. In his book, he wrote that the Earth is not the center of the Sun's orbit nor the center of the universe, but in the center of its companion elements and united with them. So, Leonardo will forever be regarded as one of the most talented individuals in history, with his book being heavily involved with popular culture. He also had countless contribution towards many diverse fields, most of wars, more of, most of which were revolutionary. And not to mention his painting, The Mona Lisa, is arguably considered the most famous painting in the world. So that is the end of the lecture. Thank you.